Yo guys, welcome to another episode of the Art of Selling podcast. On the show, we talk about the best kept sales secrets and it can potentially help you sell more stuff to more people. Over the last couple of years, we've spent close to a million rand learning from some of the best marketing gurus and business coaches out there. And I'll be sharing all of that information with you for free. Uh, I hope you enjoy it and you hope you find value in it. Today in studio, we've got a new guest, a new face to the Art of Selling podcast. Uh, we've got John Jock Janssen van Rinsberg. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's an, obviously an honor to be here to share these things with you guys. Cool, man. And then we got Gilbert Kumpukwe. Thanks for having me, the resident. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Uh, actually, today I want to talk about uh, something that you've got some extensive knowledge on and yeah. something that I'm very passionate about. And that is just obviously, uh, you know, the psychology of selling. But there is a buzzword going around that people are throwing around and uh, that buzzword is Nero marketing, and I want a little just maybe talk about it, unpack it a little bit, get and get people a better idea of what it actually is, what it means, and how they can leverage it in order to sell more stuff to more people. So, John Jock, in your perspective, Nero marketing, yeah, take it away. What do you? What is it? And and at the end of the day, what are, what does it really come down to? Yeah. So I mean, it all comes down to people, right? I mean, we all s- sell to people whether it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but it comes down to just simply understanding that the words that I've heard you say this many times and I actually like the way that you phrase it, but it's the words that we choose to articulate a certain something that has a, that has an effect on people and the, the way that we present ourselves or the way that something is portrayed um, in the value cycle of things is obviously what is super important. But if we look in the broader perspective of like neuro marketing, the, the word neuro marketing, it, it all comes down to the neuro aspect of things, meaning like it's connected to the marketing process, obviously the brain. And actually really, really interesting. I met a, um, a neuroscientist actually to, at the gym that I, this local gym that I go to here. And I had this chat with him and really it all comes down to understanding that it's people and we all have brains and we receive messages like everywhere like i mean like certain it, it this is the whole interesting part for me about this whole thing is i'm i'm very passionate about this and if i get a bit carried away you know we'll, I, I do we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll reel you in don't you? yeah yeah no no stress so like it's it's just about understanding its people. So that comes down to understanding that even everything that we look at, I mean, if we go to malls, like malls are designed uh, to to get more money out of your pocket. You walk in there, the stuff that you see left, right, is like shiny. Everything is shiny. It catches your attention. It brings you into the maze. And once you're into the maze, uh, you either walk out, obviously you walk out with less money than you walked in. Um, that's why I have uh, rule number one. It's like never take a trolley into a, um, mm-hmm. you know into a into a grocery store because yeah. you, you, well, you'll just keep until adding until you stuff. until you until you've got a family and kids <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i guess so we'll get there huh? yeah. <laughs> but so, boy, like but just to make my point neuromarketing the, the reason why i love it so much is because um i i know that one of my purposes uh in this whole process one thing i've learned about myself is to be able to help people make better decisions and in order to help people make better decisions in order to optimize, you know, to to lead in a possibility of having a overall better outcome of your life. It all starts with your decision making. But again, that comes back to the neuromarketing marketing aspect of things, because, again, the way we portray things, the way we sell things, it all is about simply just understanding that if I have a marketing message, if I have some message that's embedded inside of me that I want to share with people, like how do I differentiate? And again, it's just a fancy word of, of talking about consumer psychology because I'll, I'll unpack it quickly here. There are multiple different aspects around it, but it all comes down to decision-making sciences. So in, in retrospect, basically just looking in terms of like complexity economics, these are things that are involved in it, but it's like people will like if you don't know what it means like people will try to like sell you onto the thing of complexity economics and um really evolutionary thought is also connected into this so if you if you guys have ever read um dr david buss uh, or any of the really um uh, profound evolutionary psychologists all of this stuff connects but again my point is that just really understanding that neuromarketing allows us to uh, tap into the brains if we understand all of the pain points of the people and we understand what they ha- what they're facing with like their you know their pains what their daily lives is like every single day all of that really drills down to the to the like to the brain because once you get to the brain it's like understanding how do i capture someone's attention to give you guys just this example is that um this is one of the best examples that if you for an example like run an advertisement or push a message it's like understanding that the brain is layered in three ways 
So we have the the croc brain, obviously, that basically goes towards, and this is something I I learned from the reptilian uh, brain. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. This is something I learned from someone that pitched, uh, like, that raised money, uh, Orin Claff. So basically, the principles are just drilled down to understanding that number one, we have three layers how people make decisions. So if they would see something, it would be obviously the croc brain would be triggered. Then it will filter down into the second part of the brain, then like the middle part of the brain, mm. which will allow us to make social contextual decisions. So first, it's like if we have the boom, the clap of something, then we go, what happened? And what just happened? So if yeah. something comes across your peripheral vision, it's also then understanding, okay, so if it's something nice, if it's maybe a female and, you know, like some, and like, there are certain things that interest. trigger in your brain, right? Yeah. yeah so that, that's a part of it. And then it, the, the middle part of the brain, obviously the social context, if I walk into a room, if a, if a police man flashes his badge, all of a sudden you pay attention, um, hopefully. And um, yeah, that brings it down to the last part is obviously the, the complex side of the brain where it's the com unpacking the, com you know, the complex things of like, the, like math and like complex decision making. But that if you think about it in that framework is like really understanding that's how you can structure your message, right? Capture attention first, educate, roll down to the next thing. And that's really, I mean, like there's so many things I can talk about on that point, but yeah so what i'm hearing mm -hmm. you say is understanding how the brain works and being able to say the right things or show the right messages at the right time in order to get people to do what you want them to do yeah i mean that that really also then comes back down and understanding what is actually happening in the world because if you're if you want to differentiate or you want to stand out as a brand in in the world that we live in today we all know how important brand is but how do we get actually to a point where our message is differentiated is understanding that what is currently happening inside of the market like what are people what messages are being portrayed like how are people receiving those messages and there are many ways to go about testing and finding this but one of the ways is called just implicit response testing um we don't engage too much uh and at self system side we don't engage too much in an implicit response testing but there are ways and how you can engage with it which will allow you to basically test narrative what's currently happening in the world so it's like understanding that in COVID, some things happened or the c word if i'm allowed to say it or not some things happened um and this then shifted narrative towards like maybe like a more i'm just saying maybe i'm not i'm not talking based on data but this may be shifted perspective based on like understanding that people have a more safe environment or not that much risk taking environment because they learned a bunch of stuff. But all of this, um, I know you guys love data, but all of this is obviously derived off of data um, and really being able to make data driven decisions. Yeah, man, customer psychology is so crucial. And obviously neuromarketing is a big part of that is understanding the brain, how it works and ideally how to put messages in front of people, whether it's words or whether it's visuals, in order to get them to be more receptive to it and then to get them to act in the way that you want them to act, which is, you use the example, walking into a mall, everything is strategically designed in a, in a way for you to be receptive to the messages and be open to spending money. And um, at the end of the day, even if you walk into a specific shop in the mall, you know the products have been laid out strategically in a way for you to pay attention to the most popular products or things that they people believe that you might really want. So when you're in the aisle before you have to pay, what do you see? Candy bars. And mm -hmm. if you've got yeah, kids, yeah. everybody's going to grab it. And it's 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 that basically hacking the brain in a way. And I'm using the word hack in a not a negative connotation. Obviously, it's um, it can be seen that way, but it's understanding how the brain works and being able to put messages in front of your customers because we are referring to businesses trying to grow, businesses looking for customers and clients, understanding how to put your message in front of those people in a way where they will be receptive to it and they will be inclined to act after that. And when it comes to a business, there are literally three components that is crucial for you to convert a stranger into a customer. You are going to have to grab their attention that, you, that could be done through ads and we can use the ads example. There are obviously many ways to reach out to a potential stranger. But let's use, use ads for example. Ads will be on the front of the strategy where we're going to have to grab their attention. We're going, then going to have to convert that attention and Gil, you and I have spoken about this in a previous podcast on running Facebook ads specifically. We're going to have to grab that attention and then direct that attention to a specific destination which will be the site. 
um, which will then speak to the middle part of the brain, which is what you were talking about now. Yeah. And then the website will be, have to be designed in a way to get them to be receptive to the message and be help them to actually act in a way that's hopefully constructive to them. Uh, but it's getting them excited about taking the next step. Yeah. And that's where the back-end sales process comes on. And I think when it comes to neuromarketing, it's not something that you apply somewhere in your marketing strategy. It's not something that you just apply in a specific spot across the strategy. It is really something you apply everywhere, wherever you can. And that's why I'm mentioning the ads, the website, and the back-end sales process. Because if you can apply the met methodology around of, of neuromarketing into those different aspects of your business, you will see a higher sell-through rate. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would only apply it on the front end or the back end. And it's really looking at con consumer psychology and see how it's applicable to all aspects of your business. Yeah. I, I, I see it through the scope of having a, a full funnel perspective of, of understanding that uh, the whole game, so I will frame it is that we play this, uh, if it's a growth, uh, growth marketing kind of like activity, it's like the whole game is to increase everything that we do, obviously, is to increase the conversion rate. Once we can increase the conversion rate, there are multiple components that we can unpack with that. But it's like having a full funnel view and then fu funnel in perspective of just understanding what what the actual whole thing looks like, you know, like where do we start? Where do we end? And then the best way to usually see this, and I I, I do this for fun in a nerdy way, I guess, um, but I would look at more different companies. Uh, you know, I've been a lot more uh, since I've obviously touched base with you guys and the stuff that we've been doing. It's like I've been a lot more like paying attention to some e-commerce stuff, but it's like being able to reverse engineer that process and also see what other people are doing, um, you know, but then again, asking the question, and this comes back to a lot of like uh, conversion rate principles or like a lot of people will just simply in the physical application of the consumer psychology will just have this hippo. They will either have to like follow the hippo principle or the copycat principle where the copycat principle is like if you want to design a website and you know you want you want to do make it look nice. Most people just want to make it look nice. And, um, you know, because they care about what it it's personal to them. It's like, that's my website. It's like, I want it to look nice. But they forget the fact that first, we must design it and engineer it for the selling purposes. Yes, then we can work on the uh, on the l nice looking of the website. But, but the principle on the copycat principle is that most people will just go out, they will observe what top people are doing or someone in their industry is doing without them even knowing if they've tested that thing mm. and if it actually works and then the second principle on the physical application of the consumer psychology is just understanding that it's like hippo well hippo is this one that i'm addressing now the hippo is just basically understanding it's like maybe the the people the person that's in charge will just drive a certain narrative because he thinks it's the right way but again all of this thing comes back to the data and, and how we make the the mm. decisions but again it's a cohesive view of or holistic view of everything that's happening starting at a yeah. point and understanding it starts with our messaging i don't know if you would agree with that it starts with the messaging 100%. and then you know moves over to the to the demand and then moves over to obviously once the demand is generated to the to wherever they go and um, whatever that might be a funnel a website whatever that might be and then what happens after that is obviously we need to put some yeah some, there's different um, elements that come into play i think it's understanding that psychology is the missing piece if, you, if you're not getting the most out of your marketing whether you're running facebook ads google ads or whether you're doing email 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not because you're not using the platform correctly from a technical standpoint, it's more that you're not connecting with people from a psychological standpoint. And that's really what neuromarketing is all about, is, is to understand that if you're a marketer and you're really trying to generate more leads for your business or customers for your online store, whatever it may be, it's understanding that these platforms all exist and anybody can jump onto those platforms and run an ad. From a technical standpoint, it's not the most difficult thing to do. Yeah, obviously there are nuances around that and you've got experts who on a quantification scale understand it on a technical level really, really well. But anybody can boost a post at the end of the day and that's quite simple to do. But the reason your boosted post is not working 99% of the time is yes, there's targeting capabilities that can be improved. But I think majority of the issues is that you f completely forget or neglect the psychological component of resonating with your customers. You forget the psychological component of getting people, grabbing people's attention, converting that in, attention into intention and converting that intention into action. Mm. And I think the intent might be there, but you still have to take action. Mm. 
Mm. So, and I think those are the three ways I sum it up is mm. in my mind is that you need to put a message out there that's going to grab someone's attention or you need to do something that's going to grab someone's attention. And that's the policeman walking in, slashing his badge. Yeah. Or that is the, the pretty girl walking past and mm. who grabs your eye. It's understanding that is the message you put in front or something that you're doing to grab someone's attention. After that, it's really understanding now it's about creating intention. And then after the intention is about making sure they take action. And customer psychology, customer behavior, neuromarketing, all of these things help you streamline that whole process from start to finish. Yeah. I like this conversation. Um, one, one, one particular reason is because, you know, from, you know, from specifically from a sales side. And um, we've touched quite a bit as well ourselves on, on consumer psychology and marketing. And I think to hear it also from a salesperson themselves is, is was quite intriguing and interesting. And I actually wanted to find out, and maybe for the larger public yeah. as well, is like, in your opinion, especially from a sales side, what are those psychological elements that one under the neuromarketing umbrella that maybe you employ yourself or, or what makes it effective yeah. you know, from a, from a sales side? Yeah. I think that, that for me is also quite interesting and I'm I sure the broader audience would love to hear that. Yeah. So I think if from a, from a selling perspective, if you're really trying to, you know, uh, let's just say like uh, directly force uh, forcefully or whatever you might look at it, increase your sales, it's like literally just understanding whether it's forceful or not. It's like sales, all sales is if you're on a sales call with a person or if you're on, if you're training a sales team mm -hmm. or you're doing these things, it's just really understanding that all you're doing is you're transferring belief, right? So it's energy. So it's just energy and understanding that if you want to transfer that you understand you're, you're a superstar salesperson or whatever that might look like, how do you get other people to be superstar salespeople? It's like, number one, firstly, identifying those character traits, those, and they're usually correlated with, and I know um, I've shared this story uh, with John Dre, basically, and it's like understanding that you want to be finding, if you're looking at ramping a person on that perspective, and I will latch it onto this whole conversation. Now, you want to be finding someone that is hungry, young, um, and if it's a guy, I've seen girls that are very, very proficient at the sales too, but usually uh, the guys are easier to find. They're a little bit more uh, dominant um, and they can learn things, uh, you know, because through, we learn through osmosis, through, uh, you know, through that's why we need to have a superstar salesperson yeah. that's actually killing it. But my point is how, how does neuromarketing tie into the, this whole process of actually physically selling mm -hmm. stuff? So it's like, again, it comes down to understanding that all we're doing is we're transferring the belief uh, of the product. So when you sit down and you face another person, whether you uh, engage with uh, persuasion principles or whether you engage with influence principles, all those things stack up. Uh, credibility, status delta, those things are, are, are what we need to engineer into the process before the sell, as they the sale, as they say, starts before the initial sales call or before the initial engagement with the person, because all the things you do leads again, credibility, status, delta, all these things that you do, they lead to a, uh, like they lead to a frame. Mm. Once you've built a frame and you're there, like you are then able to take whatever uh, knowledge you have about the, about that and you're able to be presentable and then you're able to, it's, it's literally having a chat. It's like you're literally having a chat with a person and you have so much belief in the product or whatever you're trying to sell because you understand it, number one. And number two, you know, like specifically in that time, in that moment that you have with the person, your only job is to transfer that belief to that person that this thing is the best and or the only option for them. And before that you need reach that desired outcome, all of the little marketing tactics that we have, the sales stuff that we do, or the marketing stuff we do, it's not, it's not completely duds, but it's like understanding that that's the inflection point if you are on a perspective of like, and I know we talk about this a lot, but it's like, if you're selling something directly to B2B, it's like when you have an initial sales call, that's where obviously these things apply. But if you're looking through a lens of like e-commerce or you're looking through a different lens, it's like these things still apply. They all, they all build up. I mean, if you, if you hop onto someone's website and you haven't seen anything about their stuff, like the, the seven hour dependency rule in marketing obviously will state that you have, they have to see more of your stuff and before they make a purchase decision. But how do they make that decision is through looking at what is the, what stuff do you put out? That's why posting content is actually so important. Um, in my opinion, because people will obviously, they will do the okay. good old Google, right? They will do the and good old Google and touch points. Yeah. Yeah. And that it increases the throughput of you actually keeping that frame. Um, yeah. and I mean, cause you keep providing the value. 
Um, and the more the value that you provide, the more consistency there is. And yeah. Um, I think uh, it's safe to say that neuromarketing applies to everything in the sales process from A to Z. And I've mentioned this before. Um, but it is more the execution of it that changes. So from a B2B standpoint, it can be easily done over a sales call. And there's specific ways that you can leverage the tactics on a sales call um, in order to increase the actual conversion rate from people who jump on a call versus the people who buy. And I almost feel like the best neuromarketing strategy is just to be authentic and true. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like that's one thing I've realized is in the beginning when we started, you, you know, you try and persuade people into buying the product. And I've reached a point over the last couple of years where just being truthful and honest is one of the best ways to do it. Mm. And you can call it a tactic if you want, but if you are truthful and honest and, and authentic, you know, people appreciate it and people also better understand what they're actually getting into. Yeah. And it's it's one of the most most powerful strategies out there. Uh, people appreciate it, they trust you, they it's authentic. They especially from our perspective, it's like mm. we if we had to jump on a sales call with a potential prospect, you yeah. know, it's just Listen, this is all the things that we can do. This is all the successes that we've had. We have the data to back it up. There's still a risk in it for you. If you don't want to take the risk, rather put your money in the bank and get 5% a year back on it. But this is still a business. And if yeah. you're in business, you're always at risk. Yeah. But we are here to eliminate your risk because of these successes that we've had. We understand the industry. We understand what you're trying to do. And we're pretty good at doing it. Does it mean that you're going to win? Not necessarily. Does it mean that we can help you win? Absolutely. We're going to increase the odds of helping you win for sure. Yeah. And... It's almost like when you have that attitude of, listen, I've put all the puzzle pieces for you on the table. I've shown you all the cards. This is the story. Now it's clear that you know that this is actually authentically the best and, the, and truthfully the best solution for you. That's when you start building the best relationships from a, from a B2B perspective. Mm -hmm. But on, a, on, a, on an e-com perspective or from a B2C perspective, the same thing applies. It's just being truthful. Yeah. It's just being authentic. It's just being transparent. Yeah. I'm hearing you say uh, what I'm ultimately, I think if you had to say B2C, B2B, I'm hearing P2P. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people to people. People to right. people. Yeah. And that's just it. It's being humane. It's, it's, mm. it's being authentic. It's, it's being real and telling it like it is, even though, you know, it may not be this necessarily what the other person might want to hear mm. because of all the marketing messages that they've received about particular results or particular guarantees or whatever the case yeah. may be. And I, I hear where you were coming from. It, it probably even separates you from the rest um, because you are literally doing what most don't, which is P2P, which yeah. is person to person, genuinely. And I love how you're expressing it, like making them believe, mm. right? A, a logo can't just make you believe. <laughs> yeah. um, a product can't just make you believe, but the people that inspire those products make you believe. Yeah. Hundreds. yeah. This this latches on, I have, I have one more point to just latch onto that. So what I'm seeing in, in the current, uh, well, not just the economic environment, but also in the world because of everything that's happening with the technology, with AI, um, with multiple different technologies, really, but AI just really, um, with the making famous of the word AI now, everyone is, is, is an AI engineer now. But with all of that stuff that happens is that information, so the word information agnostic, because all of this information is becoming now available to people, um, at large scale, I'm seeing also that this ties into this uh, thing that you just mentioned, this point that you just mentioned, this uh, relationship kind of thing where humans are involved in the process and that I'm knowing I'm actually talking to a person and that is going to be so, so much more or not. It is important, but so much more attention should be spent on that right now if you're trying to grow your business because because of the AI, because it's so good, many times you won't know whether, you, whether you're talking to a person or whether you're talking to a robot and now that does that creates a I don't want to be talk I don't know am I am I talking to a real person so that creates this thing in people's brains where it's like this disconnect where if they know that they're actually talking to a real person they can see it's not some pre-recorded thing that's sent to people that is where I believe there a lot of businesses can really focus on um, because we are still people we still sell to people and the AI component is there it is important but it's also understanding that we are emotionally uh, connected um yeah. and so far of my understanding with ai um it's not too great at that part yet 
Uh, but yeah, anyways, that's... I think mm. uh, what it boils down to and to ground off this episode and to conclude is obviously neuromarketing in a nutshell is basically customer psychology, customer behavior, understanding all these things, but how it applies to the actual brain and how you can leverage certain tactics and strategies in order to get people to pay attention and be receptive to these messages because that all happens in the brain and then ideally getting them to take action. And neuromarketing is not something that you just apply to or customer psychology or these psychological tactics. 